Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're starting a new series in astronomy on neutron stars. And we'll also talk about pulsars, and you'll see the relationship between neutron stars and pulsars. But the question may be, what is a neutron star? And ultimately what it is, it's the leftover of a tremendous event that happens at the end of a supermassive star. Like all stars that start in the main sequence, all stars become red giants, even the very massive same main sequence stars become red giants, but at the very end of their relatively short lifespan as a red giant, the core ends up collapsing. That happens after the core fills up with iron, the fusion process can no longer continue, and therefore the core collapses in an enormous event, what causes the core to be pushed down to an extremely dense state. Now during that process, the photo disintegration, the, the disintegration of the largest nuclei into smaller nuclei, and eventually into neutrons, protons, and electrons. Well, when that massively combines and comes together into an extremely dense state, it doesn't rebounds back. It stays in that dense state and then becomes a neutron star. So essentially, the neutron star is a remnant of a collapsed core of a supermassive star. Stars typically that have a mass greater than eight times the mass of the sun, and those are the ones that eventually will end up in something called a neutron star. Now, here you can read it. When a supermassive red giant fuses lighter elements into iron inside its core, then the pressure, the radiation pressure that used to keep the core in the star in its current size, that seizes, the core collapses, and when the core collapses, it pushes the electrons and the protons together, turning them into neutrons, and therefore hence the name neutron star. Now, it doesn't mean that the entire neutron star is made up of neutrons. It still contains electrons and protons, and we'll see later on why we know that, but at least that's where the concept of the name came from, because of the implosion causing the electrons and the protons to combine into neutrons. Now, the size of a neutron star is relatively small. You can see it's about 12 miles across, yet it has a mass greater than the mass of the sun. Imagine the sun compressed down to something no bigger than 12 miles across or 20 kilometers across. The density is absolutely enormous, approximately about 1 times 10 to the 18 kilograms per cubic meter, which is the approximate density of nuclear material. So the nucleus of an atom has that kind of density, with, in other words, a neutron star is almost essentially a big nucleus. <laughs> well, not exactly, but it has the same consistency. Anyway, at least the same density. So the mass of a single cubic centimeter, now you know how small a cubic centimeter is, very tiny. Imagine something that small has a mass of 100 million tons, which is 100 billion kilograms. Wow. The total mass of a neutron star varies anywhere from one to three times the mass of the sun. Now that's an older standard, an older unit that you'll see, or an older estimate, I should say, that you'll see in older textbooks. More recently, the mass limit has been dropped down to about 2.5 times the mass of the sun. We have found, well, we think, a few neutron stars that reach about this size. And also what's interesting is that the mass of neutron stars can actually be less than the mass of a white dwarf. Now, what seems to be strange about that is a white dwarf keeps its size because of the electron degeneracy, but yet, during the implosion of the, of the core, it overpowers the ability of the electrons to push back, it goes past that limit, even if the mass is less than the Schrodinger limit of 1.4 times the mass of the sun, which means that the range of, of uh, neutron stars in mass could be anywhere from about 1 to about 2.5 times the mass of the sun. Now, how do we detect them? How do we know they're there? Imagine trying to see something like this that doesn't potentially put out a lot of visual light because it's so tiny, and of course there's no nuclear fusion taking place. The visible, the visible light that we would see would simply be from the remaining heat inside the neutron star, but since it's so tiny, you really can't see it. We can't see planets that reflect the light from their sun. We certainly can't see neutron stars, at least from a visual perspective, but we know they're there two main ways in which we can tell that they're there is sometimes they're in a binary star system and it's the first of the two stars that became a red giant and then imploded on itself became a neutron star and the secondary star that's going around it which potentially would have less mass than this star well we see it going around something but we don't know what because we can't see the neutron star 
And of course, in relative size, this is way too big. This should be a pinprick. Of course, you could see a pinprick from with a camera from there, so I drew a little dot there. But it's a tiny little thing that cannot be seen, and we have something going around it. Based upon the radius of this orbit, and based upon the mass of the star, which can be figured out by using spectroscopy, we can then determine what the mass of the other object must be. And if it's somewhere between 1 and 2.5 times the mass of the Sun, it's very likely to be a neutron star. We also sometimes see pulses of energy coming from neutron stars, and we'll talk more about that later. And so from those pulses, we can then deduce, there it is, there's a neutron star. And so we have various ways of determining that they're there. By now, we have, we have detected well over a hundred hundreds of neutron stars that we're aware of, and we'll talk about that later as well. But at least now you have an idea. If someone says, what's a neutron star? It's a super massive, dense remnant of a core that imploded on itself about 12 miles across, 12 kilometers across, with densities equaling about the density of nuclei in atoms. So basically, if you take nuclei and bunch them together into a ball this size, you have essentially a neutron star. We'll talk about the details, the differences between nuclear matter and neutron stars later, but at least it gives you a feel for what it is. There it is. That's what we call a neutron star. So you can only see a neutron star if it's a used to be in a binary star system? Yes, so the first, well, the first detections were from pulses. So they're like pulsars, and we'll talk about pulsars later. Uh, so that was our first ability to discover that they're there, discover that they're there, and then also we see them going around basically empty space, and obviously you can't have a star going around in little circles by itself, so there's something there pulling on it, and by doing some calculations, we can determine the mass of this thing, even though we can't see it. And if it falls within that range, we can deduce that it must be a neutron star. So if you have a binary star, they had a certain orbit. Does the orbit change when one of them becomes a neutron star? Yes, because before it becomes a neutron star, it was a supermassive star had much more mass altogether. It blows a lot of that mass away, it goes off into what we call a supernova remnant, so the explosion would be supernova. So the mass remaining is far less than the original star, and this star would have probably moved out quite a bit from its original orbit, but not escaping it because this one is still pulling on it. Yeah. Hmm? So what happens if both stars happen to go... Supernova. <laughs> uh, happens to become a neutron star at the same time. Um, you, well... That's a really good question, and we'll talk about that later as well. It turns out if both of the neutrons start going around each other, we can actually see the gravitational waves as a result of the two large masses rotating around each other. So it's kind of interesting. When neutron stars circle each other, you can actually see the gravitational waves from that. At least we're beginning to be able to detect them. We've detected a few of them already. And now that we have this technique down where we're going to put satellites in space to get a better accuracy on the movement of those will see gravitational waves. So if the lone supermassive star becomes a neutron star, you can only see it through the pulses? Only if the pulse is there, otherwise you're out of luck. It could be there. So actually the estimate of the number of neutron stars in the Milky Way galaxy is around 100 million, even though we've only seen a few hundred of them. So we know they're there, we just can't see many of them. Yep, yep. good questions. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad you couldn't see it on the camera. <laughs>